Hey everyone, I uh, hope you're doing well. This is Krish. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about uh, distributed architecture, but mainly in the context of smaller applications or software products, right? Uh, because, you know, in my mind, I've seen that when, when you say distributed architecture, folks tend to think that it's, uh, it's pr uh, not only primarily applicable to large systems, but you you tend to think that it, it is solely applicable to large systems, but I, that's not always the case, or it's actually never the case, right? Uh, so I want to take an example of something I'm working on currently and just want to speak to what uh, it means uh, even for smaller applications. So I'm working on a feature right now. Um, I'm working on a few different features. Uh, two of them in the context of this video is okay when you go to, to the application and you create content, uh, we want to uh, index some of that content. So when you start searching for it, uh, you find it essentially, right? Not so much a very robust externalized search engine or integration with, just, with a search platform. Uh, it's pretty embedded into the, the existing suite uh, just because you know you want to keep it small and simple when we go live and then maybe improve as we uh, uh, become more popular, hopefully, right? Um, so don't think about big search engines uh, like Apache Solar or external search systems. Uh, but it's just embedded search using the native support that say Mongo provides for instance. So search is a feature uh, and the other one is uh, notifications, uh, a variety of notifications but again in the context of this discussion, uh, let's say you're, you're sharing content with someone else, uh, they need to be notified. Like if Chris shared something with Varun, uh, Varun needs to get notified uh, about a variety of things that happen in the system. Maybe they got access to some new piece of content uh, maybe they uh, lost access, maybe they chose to uh, uh, revoke their own access, for instance. Uh, uh, not just ACL related, but I'm just taking some ACL examples, right? So these are two sort of separate types of uh, business problems. One is search and one is notifications, right? And uh, on the surface, they have very little to do with each other. So th this can be implemented just like every everything else in one of many ways, but two ways per, uh, at the highest level. One is I could touch all of the existing code in the core application, in the API application uh, that has to do with content creation. Um, so when new content gets created or content gets modified, the indexes get updated and also notifications get sent out. So even let's say I have multiple uh, modules uh, that uh, one deals with search, one deals with uh, notifications. Uh, I have to make calls to those within the core process at real time, meaning when somebody adds content uh, as part of the creation, as part of that post request, uh, you can do these two activities. One is search and one is uh, uh, registering for no, uh, notifications, right? So that's one way to go about it, but it's not very distributed, meaning it happens real time and before the response gets sent back to the client, uh, the search index needs to be updated and also the notifications get sent to, whoever, to who, whoever it is that they need to get sent to and howsoever they need to be sent, meaning it could be uh, in-app notifications, it could be email notifications, it could be SMS. Uh, we're not gonna support SMS initially, but uh, we obviously have uh, a placeholder to support that in version two, for instance, right? Uh, that's one way of doing it, but that's not, no, there's very little separation of concerns as if any. Uh, the second option is, uh, when you add new content or when changes happen to existing content, you send a message to a message broker. So in our case, say it's, it's a RabbitMQ uh, broker. Uh, you send it to one of uh, many RabbitMQ exchanges uh, and you have subscribers listening on to these exchanges. So you drop a message saying, hey, you know what, Krish created a new piece of content and that is it. You give some, uh, you add some metadata about that content that was created. Now, when the subscriber uh, picks up the message, it's gonna do whatever it is that it needs to do. It's like, hey, you know what? I now need to update the search index. I also need to send some notifications. And they could be either in-app notifications, they could be, again, email or other variety of different kinds of notifications. Uh, and so it's dealt with a separate uh, piece altogether, right? So it's a subscriber uh, that picks up the messages and you, you could be writing to different exchanges and you could have many subscribers registered uh, either to a topic or a, or a queue and uh, uh, each of them might uh, do a different kind of activity. One of them might be exclusively uh, dedicated to dealing with notifications and even within them just email notifications. There could be another subscriber that deals with SMS notifications at a later point of time and then you could have a subscriber that picks up a message and updates the search index. Now you can see that even for a small application, 
keeping this separate actually makes it much easier and cleaner and uh, let's gives us more room for extensibility later without touching the core application so tomorrow if we want to do uh, you know integrate with uh, say sendgrid for email templates and and email notifications we don't have to touch any of the, the core primary server side applications. Uh, we just need to deal with that uh, separate piece that deals with, uh, with uh, the message broker. Uh, and again, when we build a second product and we need also need to deal with notifications, we can leverage that same uh, system. Uh, because that uh, the concept of notifications and search, updating search indexes uh, has nothing to do with the core business of, of the app that you're working on right now. It's one of the features that we want to be able to support because you know you have to uh, be quickly be able to find content that you created or content that was shared with you. So hopefully uh, this gives some sense to how a distributed architecture doesn't necessarily mean large systems, huge pieces, even for smaller components, you know, the smaller the pieces, uh, the, little it, the little it does, the easier it becomes to manage uh, those, those components, right? So here is a simple example of how you could do it using a message broker and externalizing uh, these activities to so they are done by a, a separate application that you have, uh, which has its own concerns and it's not integrated into the core application, right? Um, so hopefully um, that was useful. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.